all this is dr mubin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so the summary of the discussion today is that aspirin reduces the risk of colorectal cancer however there is a nuance in here that i'm going to present to you so the the evidence that i'm going to show you is divided into three sections the middle section 26th april 2022 is when us preventive services task force removed their recommendation for off aspirin for colorectal cancer by saying that the data is not robust or data is unclear that aspirin reduces the risk of colorectal cancer so the sections before the time before and the time after i'm going to show you some evidence for various studies before or the articles that show or discuss the studies before that aspirin reduces the risk of colorectal cancer and then i'm going to show you a study that just came out from uh, norway that shows that aspirin reduces the risk of colorectal cancer so that is a summary i can provide you a quick review of why us preventive services task force said that they the data is unclear <clears throat> according to their published article they say that the studies that are observational and that are longer in duration they do show the use of aspirin associated with reduced risk of colorectal cancer however shorter period of studies with varying doses and randomized controlled trials fail to show this association so this is their basis to say that data is unclear so with this all in your mind let's start with our discussion so this is drbean.com if you would like more lectures on on medicine uh, get a plan here so this is the first one <clears throat> first of all let's look at the colorectal cancer statistics so if you see here this is male male so in the males the colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer in the female as well if you see colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer in the us for the cancer caused deaths the most common both for men and women is lung or or uh, lung and bronchi and the second most common cause of cancer death is colorectal cancer both in men and women then there is another uh, uh, update to the statistics in 2024 that says the following so this is for individuals who are 50 years or lesser so colorectal cancer was the fourth leading cause of cancer death in both men and women younger than 50 years in the late 1990s but is now first in men and second in women now to the evidence this is ucla health and here they're talking about studies about the colorectal cancer and the aspirin and they say we know that aspirin reduces the risk of colorectal cancer but we don't recommend it to the general population yet because the benefits don't outweigh the risks for everyone and the risk being the git upset plus bleeding then here they say and this is something that i would really like you to uh, uh, capture aspirin inhibits several colon cancer related pathways so these are going to be tlr arachidonic acid and nuclear factor kappa b and inhibits inflammation so please realize that for most of the chronic um, diseases and of course for cancers as well inflammation is the fuel to the fire which over time leads to cancer she suggests thinking about cancer as fire spreading quickly through the body chronic inflammation is the fuel for the fire so this is dr riza pur aspirin is the cooling agent that suppresses the fire and dampens its progression newer research shows aspirin also playing a role in the gut microbiome aspirin promotes the growth of good bacteria in the gut dr riza pur says those are the bacteria that help prevent colorectal cancer progression and development and there is a study which i want to quickly show it to you here 
This is a study from China. Inhibition of colorectal cancer in Alzheimer's disease is mediated by gut microbiota via induction of inflammatory tolerance. So instead of going over the whole study, which I'll do that at another time, the uh, Prevotella bacteria in the gut, when that is high in amount, it produces lipopolysaccharides, which cause immune silencing and reduce the risk of colorectal cancer. Unfortunately, a higher amount of Prevotella in microbiota causes the Alzheimer's disease. So I had done a discussion yesterday in the Zoom talks with the Patreons for how to manage this kind of a situation. But here, these are the two points I wanted to make about aspirin. So this is before the task force. Then here is another one. This is January 21, 2021. Aspirin use and risk of colorectal cancer among older adults. So this is 2021, before the task force recommendation. Here they say, in this pooled analysis of two cohort studies with a total of 94,540 participants, regular use of aspirin at or after age 70 years was associated with a lower risk of colorectal cancer compared with non-regular use. However, this reduction in risk was evident only among individuals who initiated use at a younger age, for example, let's say 40 or 50 years of age. These results suggest that initiation of aspirin use at an older age for the sole purpose of primary prevention of colorectal cancer should be discouraged. Again, this is before, 20, before 2022. However, the findings support recommendation to continue using aspirin if initiated at a younger age. So this is the colorectal cancer and aspirin before the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. So here is the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. Look at their date here, April 26, 2022. And this was actually a recommendation for cardiovascular disease primary uh, prevention and secondary prevention. However, in here, here is a line that they have added. The evidence is unclear whether aspirin use reduces the risk of colorectal cancer incidence or mortality. Then they have an article here. Again, if you look at the date, April 26, 2022, aspirin use to prevent cardiovascular disease and colorectal cancer. If you see here, this is also by U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. So this is the evidence they had or an article they had published at, in JAMA. So here, if you see, couple of excerpts, there was limited trial evidence on benefits of colorectal cancer with the findings highly variable by length of follow-up and statistical significance only when considering long-term observational follow-up beyond randomized trial period. So a similar uh, message later in the article as well where they say, Studies reporting the association of aspirin with CRC, colorectal cancer, incidence had highly variable results by length of follow-up, duration of use, and timing of outcome measurement. For events occurring within RCT periods, only four studies, low-dose aspirin had no statistically significant association with CRC incident at 5 to 10 years of follow-up time. So now you have seen too that before this recommendation, there were studies and articles that were describing the use of aspirin to lower the risk of colorectal cancer. Then U.S. Preventive Services Task Force came out and said, not robust data. Now I want to show you a study that came out in July 2024, so this year, where, and this is a study from Norway, low-dose aspirin and prevention of colorectal cancer evidence from a nationwide registry-based cohort in Norway. So here they say, let me increase the size of this, we included 2.18 million or 2,186,390 individuals during the median follow-up of 10.9 years. 26.5% or 579,196 used low-dose aspirin and 1.8%, that is 38,577, were diagnosed with colorectal cancer. Now, this is a very interesting study because they actually show with statistical significance that the aspirin reduces the colorectal cancer risk. Current use, that is someone who is using aspirin, of aspirin versus never use was associated with lower CRC risk and look at the risk reduction, 
0.86 is the hazard ratio that means 13 percent lower risk of crc in aspirin users the association was more pronounced for metastatic crc so this is very important that the metastatic colorectal cancer so colorectal cancer can be can be localized that is within the gut or it can be regional that is going around in the other tissues or the lymph nodes or it can be metastatic and that is it's going to lungs and other tissues so the association of aspirin with reduction in metastatic crc was more pronounced which is a very good news because if the uh, the cancer is localized or regional, it is easier to manage compared to the cancer that is now going to the other tissues. So look at this. The association with more was more pronounced for metastatic CRC hazard ratio 0 0.79. So that means 21% reduced risk of metastatic colorectal cancer. Then regionally advanced. So that is the 11% reduced risk and localized that is 7% reduced risk. A significant trend was found between duration of current use and CRC risk. So that is the 0.91 or 9 percent for lesser than three years use. So somebody started aspirin and they are lesser than three years of its use and once again we are talking about low dose aspirin that is 100 milligram per day or lesser then the risk reduction is about 9 percent. Then 15% if they've been using aspirin between 3 to 5 years and then 16% if it is more than 5 years versus never use. For past users, for example, somebody was using aspirin and they stopped it thinking it is of not, not you, you, no use or the bleeding risk or the GIT upset or other issues that caused them to stop it. For past use, hazard ratio was 0.89. So that means 11% reduction for stopping less than three years. So somebody who stopped aspirin usage between from now to three years in the past, they still had 11% reduced risk of colorectal cancer. Between three to five years, if they stopped, then they have about 10% reduced risk. And then only 2% if the if they stopped aspirin more than five years or five or more years. We as, uh, and this is compared to never users. We estimated that aspirin use averted 1073 cases of CRC. And these data are significant. And finally, I would just very quickly show you this study. In inhibition of colorectal cancer in Alzheimer's disease is mediated by gut, by gut microbiota via induction of inflammatory tolerance and this is a very interesting study. I'll discuss it at another time. Uh, thank you very much. Please like, subscribe and share, comment as well. And if you would like to have more lectures, medical lectures, uh, become a member at Dr. Bean. We also do two Zoom talks. So for example, yesterday was Wednesday and we did a thorough discussion of the mechanisms of these studies in aspirin and colorectal cancer and Alzheimer's disease. So if you would like that as well, become part of the Patreon or Substack or Dr. Bean and we'll go from there. Thank you very much and talk to you again.